Amen, amen, amen. One of the very well, if not the most well-known of what's referred to as the Negro spirituals. We played that this morning and we have uh, been playing uh, similar songs all month long in recognition of uh, Black History Month. We're not meeting physically, so we've not uh, had a physical program uh, praise God, we're praying that in the coming years we'll be able to do that uh, once God allows us to come back together again. But uh, that is one of the uh, old ones, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. I remember that my grandmother used to sing that song when I was a child. Thank God for you today. Thank you for joining us here at the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church right here in Auburn, Alabama. I want to thank our, our members. Uh, and for those of you who may not actually be members or may not even live in the area, because I know that we have a reach out across the United States. If you're not in the area, if you're not a member of our church, we welcome you to the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church uh, Sunday morning sermon. We pray that there'll be a time where you'll be able to visit our church and you'll be able to be back with us as soon as possible, as soon as we're able to gather back together again. I want to ask you to continue to be in prayer for those members of our church who are sick and ill, who may be recovering from one thing or the other. Uh, we know that we're in a uh, global pandemic now, and uh, we have, must stay in prayer. Also be in prayer for those who are bereaved, those in our membership who've lost loved ones. Please continue to be in prayer for them. Just pray for our church. Pray for the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church, that God would continue to sustain us, that he would continue to keep us, that he would continue to uh, keep us uh, financially stable, that spiritually stable, uh, emotionally stable as we go through the trials that we go through. I want to share with you this morning a passage of scripture from uh, the book of Psalms. Uh, we'll be looking today and teaching from the 37th Psalm, Psalm 37. 
Uh, before we go there, uh, let us pause for a moment of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now uh, for this opportunity to come before you today. We thank you, Lord, for the grand privilege of uh, being chosen to expound upon your word with your people. Lord, I don't, uh, I don't take this responsibility uh, lightly. I know that it is a huge blessing that you allow me to do so. But Lord, Lord, I ask you to let me move myself out of the way now so that you may speak to me through your Holy Spirit, speak to your people through your spirit today. I ask that you prepare the hearts, the minds, and especially the spirits of those of us that are here today, listening today, whether by live or recorded measure, prepare the hearts, the minds, and especially the spirits uh, that the word might fall on good ground and bring forth as much fruit as you see fit. It's in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. I'll be reading today from the King James Version. Open your Bibles with me to Psalm 37. Actually, this is a very familiar passage of scripture to most of, uh, most of us. There have been songs written about this particular passage of scripture. Many sermons have been preached in God's churches across the world on this particular passage of scripture. But today I want to take a, a little different viewpoint on it. I want you to look at it from a different angle. Actually, the angle that we will be looking at it from today is taken from the original Hebrew, the original Hebrew writings. We've done a word study, study uh, on this particular verse, and I was blessed when I saw what God has to say through this verse from the original, uh, from the original meaning in the original writings. Psalm 37, beginning at verse 23. We'll look at verses 23 and 24. Uh, I probably won't get past the, the 23rd verse, but we'll just see how the Lord leads. Reading from the King James Version, these words are here written. The steps of a good man are, are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Verse 24, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Amen. Amen. As I said, you've been, you've heard that uh, that twenty third verse a number of times. Uh, as I said, one of our favorite songs here for our choir at Mount Moriah is "Order My Steps in Thy Word, O Lord." But I want to look at this particular verse today. As I said, going back to the original writings. You know, it is, and I'll, I'll, I'll suggest this to those of you who want to do some serious Bible study. Uh, there are uh, ways online through many websites and, many, of course, through many books where you can actually go back and look at the original writing and do a what's called a word study and literally study each word, each uh, paragraph, each chapter, word by word by word, to get a complete understanding of what the original writers were saying or what they were trying to say. I've had the opportunity this week to go and do a word study on this particular verse. And, and let's talk about it for just a moment. I wanna share with you from this particular subject. Keep on stepping. It says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So keep on stepping. Keep on stepping. Let's look at what the word says. The writer of our psalm, it's the psalm of David, a wonderful psalm. Psalm 37 is one of my favorite. Of course, all of them are favorites, but I do love Psalm 37 because in this 37th psalm, David gives us some good practical advice. When he gets to verse 23, the one that we're looking at today, he says, order, the, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Now, that word ordered caught my attention. That word ordered has really uh, gotten into my mind. It was in my mind for several days. And I went to the word of God, went to the word steady and said, God, what do you mean that, 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 that the steps of a man are ordered by the Lord? And I think sometimes we get the wrong idea about that particular verse. Because when you think of the word ordered, it, it it's almost seems as though something that someone is making you do or something that someone is commanding you to do. But, but that's not what the original writer meant when he wrote this particular verse. 
the original Hebrew, that word order in the original Hebrew is a word that's spelled K-O-O-N. It's pronounced kun. Uh, what the writer was saying, that word in the original Hebrew means to set things up, to set things up, to prepare, to arrange. So let's read it again, reusing the original translation. The steps of a good man are set up by the Lord. The steps of a good man are prepared by the Lord. The steps of a good man are arranged by the Lord. That's what the writer David was trying to say, that the steps of a man, the steps of a woman, the steps of a child of God are literally set up, prepared, arranged by God himself. Let me tell you, when God orders your steps, uh, that means that he sets it up, but we've got to step. We've got to move. We've got to go forward. That's what this, this meaning is saying, is that, that when God sets something up for you, we have got to actually make a move. God is not going to make us do anything. God is not going to uh, push us to do anything. God will open up doors for us. God will open up avenues of deliverance for us. God will open up safety uh, for us, but we have to take the first step. Let me leave this with you in your spirits, my brothers and my sisters. God will not do anything for you which he has enabled you to do for yourself. Let me say it again. God will not do anything for you that he has enabled you to do for yourself. God is not our babysitter. He's not our spiritual Santa Claus. There are things that God has given us to do and things that we must do in order to reap the benefits of the blessings of God. There are things that we are asked to do. The reason that many of us are no further along in life right now is because of the fact that God has opened up doors, but we haven't taken the step to go through it. We haven't taken the steps to go forward. We, 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 we are afraid. We talk about we walk by faith, that the, the just should live by faith. Well, many times faith is taking a step. Many times faith is taking that first step without seeing the second step, taking that first step without knowing what step four, five or six are. And so what happens in our lives is this. God says, well, I'm waiting for you. I've opened the door for you. I've ordered your steps. I've set things up for you. I've arranged for your deliverance. I have prepared you for your saving, for, for saving you from whatever it is you're dealing with. But because of a lack of faith, you've not taken the first step. Many of us, before we go forward with God, we want to see the whole picture. But God says, no, this is a, this is a journey by faith. If we will step out and step number one, then God will show us what step number two is. Then God can show us what step number three and number four and number five and so forth and so on. God will not lay out the, his entire plan for you all at once. He will order our steps. He will set up our situation. He will arrange for our deliverance. He will prepare for our deliverance, but we have to take the first step. That's what this message is about. That's what this verse is about, having faith in God. Let me tell you something, beloved. Walking by faith, listen to me, walking by faith means that God is not obligated to reveal to us what step two is. God's not oblig obligated to reveal to us what his entire will for us is. God says, step out on faith. The steps of a man are ordered by God. I say again, the word kun means to be set up to be, be prepared, to be arranged by God. God has arranged for our deliverance, but we've got to have faith to step through the door. We've got to have faith to step out on what God's word says, to step out on the leading of his Holy Spirit. That's what this particular verse means. You know, there's a song that I remember hearing. Uh, it says, walk in the light, the beautiful light. Ain't it wonderful how the light shines? Jesus is the light of the world, and he has lighted our path, and he may only light one step at a time. He may only light one day at a time. He may only light one moment at a time, but he expects us to step out on faith in the light that he's given us, and then he'll open up door, light number two, a door number two, a door number three, a door number four. 
we have to learn, beloved, listen to me. We have to learn that God lays things out for us, but in many cases, we have to participate in our miracle. Let me say that again. We have to learn to participate in our miracle. There are many things that we would sit and we would pray to God. God, deliver me from this. Or God, help me in this situation. And God says, I've already opened the door. I've already set it up for you. I've already prepared it for you. I've already arranged it for you. You now have to step out on faith. What is it in your life that God has spoken to you about? What is it in your life that you want to do? Where is it that you want your church to be? Where is it that you want your family, your marriage, your relationships to be? How do you want them to grow? God says, if you've prayed, you've asked me, and I've answered your prayer. I've ordered your steps. Now you've got to make the step of faith in order to reap the blessings that I have for you. Well, Pastor, I don't really understand. Let me give you an example in this short message. Uh, God's children of Israel, you know, they were in slavery in Egypt for more than 400 years. God sent Moses, told Pharaoh, let my people go. After 10 plagues, Pharaoh finally agreed to let God's people go. So here's Moses leading over 1 million Jews out of, out of Egypt, headed toward the promised land. They get down the road, just a few miles down the road. Not, not more than a couple of days out of Egypt, and Pharaoh changes his mind. Pharaoh tells his army, the captains of his chariots, go get them, bring them back, kill as many of them as you want to. You know the story. But the problem that each Israel had was that Israel had run into a problem. The problem was that Pharaoh's army was behind them, and in front of them was a Red Sea. On either side of them were the mountains. And the people started grumbling. Moses prayed to God. God tells Moses, Moses, stretch out your rod. And the Bible says that the east wind came and parted the Red Sea. And the bottom of the Red Sea became dry ground. Now, here is Israel standing on the banks of the Red Sea. Here is Israel trying to escape the, 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 the murderous army that was behind them. And here is God has arranged them dry ground. God has set it up for them. God has, has prepared dry ground for them. But Israel must take a step of faith and walk through the Red Sea. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If Israel had stayed on the banks of the Red Sea and said, no, I'm scared to step out. I see all that water up on either side. I, I see the dry ground. But what happens if I get out in the middle of the Red Sea and then the waters come back? Then we'll drown. See, when you're trusting God, when you're trusting that God has ordered your steps, that means that God has set it up for you. God has prepared it for you. God has arranged for your deliverance. God arranged for Israel to deliverance, but Israel, hallelujah to the Lamb, had to step out in faith and walk through the Red Sea. They didn't know what the other side held. They didn't know what would happen when they got in the middle, but they stepped out on God's word. You see, sometimes in our lives, we've got uh, what is figuratively a Red Sea in front of us. God is saying, just keep on going. As a church, sometimes God, God wants us to go forward as a church. Uh, somebody says, well, I don't think we can afford it. I, I, I just don't see it. Well, you don't see it because God didn't show it to you. God shows it to the leader. You need to follow God's leadership as long as that leadership is walking with God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Moses led the people through, but before Moses led them through, God prepared the way. Let's go back to our text verse. That's why I wanted to say, you got to keep on stepping, honey. You got to keep on stepping. Don't stop stepping. Don't stop going forward. Don't stop walking forward in God and, and what God has prepared for us. I, I'll give you another. The same, same children of Israel. Remember, after 40 years in the wilderness, in the book of Joshua, uh, they, they, are, they, they are parked on the banks of the River Jordan. They can see across Jordan the land of Canaan. They can see the city of Jericho on the other side of Jordan. And, and God says, I, Jordan is the, uh, Canaan rather, is the land that I promised you, but you're going to have to cross uh, this river Jordan. God speaks to Joshua, gives him the rules of engagement. God speaks to Joshua and told Joshua, tell the priest 
to take the ark. I got your Bible reading here now. Take the ark of God and put the ark of God on their shoulders. And the word says that Joshua told them, when you put your feet, when the priests put their feet in the river Jordan, that the river Jordan backed up. The word says that, that it backed up all the way to the city, which is called Adam. And the river Jordan became dry ground and during the rainy season. The river Jordan became dry ground. God set it up for them to go in Canaan. God set it up for them to go into the promised land. God arranged it for them to go into the promised land. God ordered their steps for them to go into the promised land, but Egypt had to get stepping. Egypt had to get stepping. Egypt had to get stepping. Somebody listen to me right now. You got to get stepping, honey. You got to get stepping and step out on God's word. Step out on faith. Step out on what he told you. And you can't see it, but God's got a blessing for you on the other side. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I see it again. I see it again in, in, in the New Testament. You, you remember you remember in the New Testament when, when Jesus came walking uh, on the water in, 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 in the fourth watch of the night. Sometime between 3 and 6 a.m., the disciples had been battling that storm. And Jesus comes walking toward them. And they thought he was a ghost at first. But, but Peter said, no, that looked like Jesus. I, I believe that's Jesus. And Peter said, Lord, if it's really you, bid me come. Jesus simply spoke one word, come. And Peter, on the word of God, Knowing that he couldn't swim, Peter wasn't a fool. He 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 was kind of uh, uh, at times impetuous, but he wasn't a fool. He knew he couldn't walk on water. But Peter got to step it. Peter stepped out of the boat and started walking toward the Jesus because Jesus had laid the foundation for him. That foundation was the water. Jesus said, "Come on out, come to me." When God orders our steps. It means that God sets up, he arranges, he prepares the way ahead for us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But we've got to have the faith in him. We've got to have faith to step out on what he's given us. We've got to get stepping. That's all I'm saying. A lot of times churches, families, uh, uh, communities never go forward because they never step out of their comfort zone. But we've got to get stepping. Get stepping in our marriages. Get stepping in our work relationship. Get stepping in our relationship with God. I'm telling you that God orders the steps. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Of a good man, a good woman. He lays it out. He sets things up. He prepares it for us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. As we sit and listen to this message today, I want you to remember that God has a way out for you. He's not going to push you to go through it. He's not going to push you to take that step of faith. He's not going to shove you out into the middle of your Red Sea and because he's already prepared that place for you. So, my friends, as I get ready to, to leave you here for a moment, I just want to leave this with you today. The, 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 the just shall walk by faith. God will not always show you all of his plan at one time. He'll give you the part that you need to know to take the first step. The scripture said in verse 23, the steps of a man, and depending on what uh, translation you're reading, the NIV says that the, the steps of a man are made firm by the Lord. The English Standard Version says that the steps of a man are established by the Lord. Uh, all of them mean the same thing that God has set it up for us. God has arranged for our deliverance. God has prepared a way out for us, but it's up to us to get stepping. It's up to us to get stepping. One, one more and I'll leave you alone. You remember in John chapter nine, when there was a man born from his, blind from his birth. And the Bible says that when Jesus got ready to heal him, Jesus spat on the ground and he made mud and he put the mud on the man's eye. And then he told the man, go wash in the pool of Siloam. 
In other words, I prepared your eyes to be healed. But you got to get checked. You got to go to the pool of Siloam. You got to participate in your miracle. Don't just sit still and expect God to pick you up and put you where you're supposed to be. You got to trust in God, have faith in God. And just like that man at the pool of Siloam, after Jesus spat on the ground, put that mud on his eyes, Jesus said, now you go wash. Let me tell you something. If that man had not got stepping, he'd still be blind. If he had not started stepping out in faith, he would still be blind. Somebody listening to me today, you need to get stepping. On faith in God's word. On faith in God's word. Jesus is there to back you up. Jesus is there to take care of you. And yes, as the next verse says, sometimes you may even stumble and fall. But we'll talk about that next time. But just because you stumble and fall, it doesn't mean that that wasn't the preparation that God had for you. Sometimes that just means that God wants to see if you want to get up. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Somebody ought to hear me today. You got to get stepping. The steps of a man, of a woman, of a child of God, according to the words of scripture, are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Y'all know that Jesus is ever watching us. He's ever praying for us. He's ever laying out the preparation before us. He's parting Red Seas. He's, he, he, he's backing up the, 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 the Jordan rivers in our life. He, 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 he's putting salve on our wounds. And he's telling us to get stepping. Get stepping, my friends. Out in faith on God's word. Get stepping in faith on God's word. Jesus died for my sins and yours. And now he asks us, to have faith in him. We can have faith in him because we know that even after he was crucified and, and put in a borrowed tomb, that he didn't stay there. So we we, we know that three days later, he, he was, he was rose from the grave by the power of God. If you will step out on faith, God will order your steps. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jesus is alive and well. He got up with all power in his hands. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Somebody, somebody needed that word today. Somebody needed a word to urge you to get stepping out in faith on God's word. Our steps are ordered, set up, prepared, and arranged by God. I bless you. Pray with me. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you now. Thank you that you've prepared us, Lord, to hear this word today. And I don't know who it was meant for, but I believe that somebody needed to hear this word today, that we can step out in faith and you'll be there to hold us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. May God bless you. May God keep you, is my prayer. Amen. God bless you.